<laughs> Welcome, Nan Chen, the president of MEF. Delight, Thank you. Delighted to have you here at uh, MEF 19. Um, you know, the, the charter of MEF has changed throughout the years. And now what we see is a lot of activity from the MEF in SD-WAN. How did that come about and why is MEF the correct place for that to reside? Very good question. Good seeing you. Good to uh, see as you. As always. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a very good question. We have uh, transformed through the years and uh, multiple times, obviously. Yep. And it started with the carry Ethernet, as you, as you know, really driving that market to be an $80 billion market, service market uh, to, to this year. And uh, what we did was uh, initially, when we see what's the next mountain to climb, what does the industry need, and we realize SD1 as a technology, similar to early days of a carry Ethernet, it doesn't really have a service attribute, service definition. And industry are looking for a particular body to do that, and then we end up being the one to deliver. The reason actually kind of simple and a natural fit is because SD WAN initially was delivered over the internet. People think is that's a, you know, over anything would be great. Mm -hmm. But then they realize a quality service uh, is really important, and the best effort just doesn't cut it. Yeah. So they realize the underlying technologies. Underlay technologies is almost just as important as overlay uh, transport, such as SD WAN. Mm -hmm. And MEF, for one reason or another, would define the underlay technology as such, a, such as the carry Ethernet, such as IP, and an optical, and will lay the foundation for deliver a perfect SD WAN service. You know, over assured, uh, uh, dynamic, and high-speed networks, so that SD WAN just came. Uh, right on our lap, and, and, and have, uh, we announced the first uh, standards, which is the MEF 70, uh, earlier this year, and now we're working on an extension of that MEF uh, uh, 70.1. So it's a, it's a perfect transition. We're really happy to be the organization to, do, to find the standards for it. So that's great. So you're, you're able to start stitching together the various layers that result in an SD-WAN service that is high performance, that is secure, right. and create some of the standards around that. Now, what are, the, what are the, the types of standards that you see MEF working on for, for SD-WAN? You initially were doing service definition, as you yeah. mentioned, um, but you're going to be getting into not training, but certification. Yes. So, so you're running the SAT, you're not doing the SAT prep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, that's actually true. So we, uh, we kind of take a playbook of uh, the success of uh, Carry Ethernet, which we have driving the market. So in other words, you define the service definition and then you enforce that service definition and adoption through certification. And mm -hmm. that certification, including the service certification, the technology certification, as well as the professional certification, which is what you're referring to mm -hmm. as a SAT. And the interesting is, we doing, at this show, we actually launching um, the SD1 certification for all three, services, technology, and professionals. Um, so in addition, we actually launched a new uh, white paper specifically you know, regarding the education of the market in terms of the SD1 technology. And one of the things uh, I also thought was uh, uh, interesting as, as we're doing this, we already have people uh, signing up. I think, in fact, we uh, really, <laughs> yeah, as we just start preparing the launch and doing the uh, pilot, people really start buying up to uh, line up to do the certification, so which is really happy. And then we actually did a uh, professional certification uh, recently for the beta, which we use that result as a way to really expand, to polish the, the eventual uh, certification test. There are 200 people signed up you know, uh, within the short period of time. So we're really pleased Excellent. with the momentum. So a similar direction that you took with Carrier Ethernet, yes. where you had those, those certification processes. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. You know, as we look around the POC floor, what is most interesting to you? What are you hoping to see um, or what have you seen in the in the POX that yeah, you think Yeah, I've seen uh, quite a few uh, different um, design. One of the ones that stands out is uh, one of the ones that at t was driving about the uh, lending gear, the virtual uh, virtu uh, virtual reality lending gear, how that actually uh, come together for the maintenance to know what actually need to be done. You put on those uh, goggles and, and actually see what does actually need to be done. So that I thought that was really interesting. You know, you utilize 
not only some of the technologies we develop that carry Ethernet and SD WAN, but also the edge computing uh, as well as the 5G. So we want to deliver the MEF services over 5G as well. So this is uh, something uh, you know the AT and T worked with the partners and delivered. I thought that was very interesting, very relevant. Yeah, that, uh, that was an interesting part, yeah. um, um, but treating only that um, that edge application, not really so much concerned with uh, with a multi-domain implementation, but but all of the complexities of uh, of deploying a 5G. Um, mobile edge computing type of, uh, of, of application. Right, what happened is uh, a lot of the applications start moving towards the edge. Even though they may necess they may actually sit in the cloud, but they actually move to the edge so that you can have, uh, you know, reduce the latency to be able to deliver that right. real-time uh, uh, real uh, responses. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you need to deliver, if you do the virtual, uh, kind of virtual reality, you need to deliver within like, uh, 15 to 20 milliseconds. Otherwise, you, you get kind of daisy. You, you, you exactly. really kind of uh, yeah. not necessarily feel like you're actually in the it's world. It's like being in an amusement park yeah. when you're in those virtual out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. So, <laughs> you, you, so that kind of uh, a performance needs to be delivered through, you know, assured network. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, assured means performance and security but also in a sense of uh, being able to deliver it uh, in a timely manner with the less, you know, obviously the, uh, the latency need to be low. That's what, uh, you know, the, the underlying technology, which we talk about to carry Ethernet, IP, and, and now 5G to be able to deliver that. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I've seen a lot of the POCs that are demonstrating various uh, elements of, of, of LSO, um, some of the standard APIs yes. that we, we've developed there. Right. Um, where do you see that going? What is, uh, where are carriers having and, and their hardware suppliers um, able to leverage those? What, is, what are we waiting for? How's yeah. Sonata doing? How's uh, everything else? Sonata is doing really well. For those of you not necessarily know, Sonata is a, is a one uh, API, it's a, it's a, a, a east westbound API to mm -hmm. allow the service provider to be able to communicate with each other uh, in a dynamic way. And uh, we have received overwhelming support, over 50 plus service providers. 150, uh, signed, over, uh, wow. 50, sorry, 50 oh, plus. Oh, okay. <laughs> 50 That's plus. still very I, good, impressive. We're going to get there. <laughs> we're going to get exactly. there. Uh, but uh, to date, and we have uh, 50 plus service providers sign up for adoption for the Sonata APIs. What does it give you is really gave us ability to be able uh, to enable a, fully federated uh, global network service fabric that can deliver unprecedented uh, enterprise experience. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you will have a services end to end and to be able to cross multiple service providers yeah. with API Excellent. enabled uh, federated model. Excellent. Now, Nan, you must go out and talk to some of the um, uh, large scale uh, cloud service providers as well. Um, are they going to be adopting LSO? Is that, because that certainly would simplify enterprise life as well. Yeah, it, it's a, a work in progress. I think we're still working with them, and, and as you know, they feel like they can do a lot of different things and everybody kind of adopt their model. But once the, the application started moving from the cloud, central cloud, to the edge, and then the edge computer becomes really important, and then the number of the edge versus number of the cloud uh, becoming a, so huge in terms of numbers, they really need to automate that process. Absolutely. When the application move up there. That's where I believe um, the map have the opportunity to be able to have the ability for work with these uh, cloud providers to be able to adopt the automation uh, in terms of a Sonata or other uh, east westbound APIs to deliver that service quickly. And otherwise, uh, they won't be able to do it. You know, It'll be too either. complex. Yeah. yeah. Too now, time consuming. That's right. Uh, also, the network service providers are uh, becoming essential in terms of part of the experience mm -hmm. these cloud providers uh, to be able to deliver to the their end customers. Because you have to have that compute power at the very edge of the network that's for some right. of these applications. That's right, and then yeah. the connectivity between the two. Not just say, hey, you know, let's just hope for the best. You yeah. gotta be able exactly. to have not only, not only uh, they be able to deliver, but they have to have the visibility. They wanted to see whether or not that service is actually going to deliver at the time when they go into the end customers. Right. So it's really important for them.
All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Nan. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, same here. And, Great uh, and good luck with the rest of the show. I, it's going really well. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Thanks. it's really going well. I'm, in, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about it. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you.